The raw emotional intensity of the testimony will strike a deep chord with anyone who shares a sense of mounting frustration and helplessness, watching as the government stumbles in its duty. It's a volatile mix of anger, fear, and a desperate call to action, electrifying those who feel their communities are teetering on the edge due to reckless immigration policies and inept leadership. I think it's like kind of odd that like a guy like me has to come out from doing what I do on a daily basis to have fun because I see what's going on in these streets and I see you guys just sitting up there in them comfy chairs and suits and like, and I'm getting out here every day and I'm broadcasting this and you guys are just sitting up there in suits. And like, I, I really challenge you guys to get out here and do something. These patients are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They're running into, uh, they flipping cars in the middle of the street. And I don't know how like y'all can be comfortable with this. Like, I don't know like who's getting paid from it. I feel like, I honestly feel like someone's getting paid from it in the background. They dropping, they, you got a bunch of people on a bus getting dropped off at a gas station to come down here. I know a single mom that FaceTimed me tonight, FaceTimed me this morning at the welfare office that really need, like, that really need something. And it's nothing but immigrants over there. And I don't even want to, like, seem like I'm coming down on the immigrants because it's the people that's bringing them down here. Because wherever they're at, that's what they're used to, bro. They're in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head off and walking off with them and, and eating them, like... Y'all get the Highway State Patrol down here every week, and then y'all get, like, a task force for the Highway State Patrol, and they look for guns, and they look for dope, and this and that, and the fourth. That same people that y'all got riding up and down Limestone doing U-turns, pulling people over for blinkers, and pulling people over for, like, going left to center and, like, a couple miles over, like, y'all can take them same people, the Highway State Patrol, and you can take them in every single one of their silver chargers and Dodge Durangos, and y'all can take them to uh, Sunset. And y'all can park them right over there, and y'all can teach people how to drive since the Highway State Patrol knows so much how to buy know so much about traffic laws and know what to do in traffic they need to y'all pay them they can go over there and teach these Haitians how to drive because it's, it's getting a bro i'm getting thousands of views on on these and it's going to get bigger and it's only going to get worse and y'all sitting up there in these chairs y'all all y'all need to get out here and do something y'all making hundreds of thousand dollars y'all need to put on a t-shirt and some crocs and then y'all need to come out here in these streets and y'all need to go out here and uh i'm out here before the police is like y'all need to do something bro y'all really got to stand on minutes y'all getting paid all this money just to wear a suit and sit in a chair? I don't think, I think it's, I think it's crazy, bro. They, like, we got to do something, bro. It's kids out here getting hurt. Like, only reason I even went on here and said something about it is because somebody told me they walking from the school and a Haitian almost ran into them. And who is getting paid? Like, how much money is y'all really getting paid, like, to bring them over here? Like, I know it's deeper than them. I know that's where they come from and that's what they do. That's their country. I don't know what they got going on over there, but they can't do that over here. And if y'all just getting paid from it and then y'all ain't doing nothing about it, I think that's super weird, bro. Y'all got to stand on business. Y'all got to really, like, step up. Like, it's, it's lame, bro. Like, for real. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. In Springfield, residents testify with alarming clarity about Haitian immigrants, describing how they kill ducks in parks and engage in other disorderly behaviors. Such acts, like the grim imagery of ducks having their heads cut off, are more than just violations of law and order. They are seen as an affront to the standards that define American life. For many, this paints a stark picture of a government that has utterly failed to enforce the most basic laws, leaving local residents vulnerable to chaos and illegality. The dissatisfaction bubbling up from the community feels like a direct condemnation of leaders who seem blind to their duty to maintain public safety. If the government can't uphold the rule of law, chaos will reign, threatening the very fabric of both local and national identity. The scene unfolding in Springfield is seen as a microcosm of the larger national crisis, where illegal immigration, especially when poorly managed, erodes the values and customs that once unified American communities. There's a growing sense of dread that towns like Springfield are being overwhelmed, their character fundamentally changed by outside forces. And when politicians like Kamala Harris are invoked, it heightens the fear that this is not just a local issue, but a reflection of the entire country under certain leadership. The disturbing image of migrants, grabbing ducks and chopping off their heads, becomes a symbol, a metaphor for the degradation of local traditions and the intrusion of foreign elements that threaten the national identity. This anxiety is part of a larger narrative that American borders, values, and cultural identity are under siege, overwhelmed by waves of unfiltered, illegal immigration. 
residents express a deep-seated belief that government officials have either failed them completely or, worse, are deliberately allowing this disruption to persist for their own gain. This feeds into a conservative belief that the government is corrupt, neglecting the interests of its own people while benefiting from their suffering. The anger is palpable. There's a sharp critique of political elites, painted as aloof and out of touch with the everyday struggles of ordinary Americans. The call for city councilors to ditch their suits, get out into the streets, and face the reality of the chaos is a cry for leadership rooted in genuine responsibility, not detached bureaucracy. Demanding that they wear t-shirts and crocs is a symbolic rejection of elitism and a complaint about how far removed those in power are from the consequences of their decisions. What's striking in the testimony is the deep sense of personal responsibility, the authenticity in how residents speak of their duty to their community and environment. They're calling on the government to act, demanding it, in fact while expressing their frustration that ordinary citizens are being forced to step in where officials have failed. The fury directed at leaders sitting comfortably on the sidelines while chaos unfolds is a scathing indictment of the insincerity of governance. When the speaker declares, I can't take it anymore. It's not just personal exhaustion. It's the weight of watching a community unravel. It marks a critical confrontation between individual values and the external system's moral failure to uphold its responsibilities. The fear surrounding Haitian migrants isn't just about lawlessness. It taps into something more primal. There's a psychological shift, a loss of control, and deep anxiety over the erosion of social order. The chaotic images of migrants killing ducks and causing public disturbances create an instinctive sense of unease, triggering a fear of societal collapse where norms once thought unshakable are crumbling and the government seems powerless to restore stability. This collective anxiety drives a political movement that prioritizes law, order, and a return to traditional values. At the core of the testimony is a profound distrust in government, with repeated accusations that officials are being paid off to ensure the chaos continues. It's a betrayal of the highest order, the belief that those in power, instead of protecting the people, are complicit in their suffering. This betrayal shapes the emotional tone of the testimony as residents feel abandoned, let down by the very institutions meant to safeguard their communities. The government, instead of being the shield against chaos, has become the hand that allows it to fester.